Welcome to the T2 Hubcast. Join Martin, Dave, Spencer and guests as they discuss all things personal and professional development. The T2 Hubcast, brought to you by the People Performance People. So welcome to another T2 Hubcast with me, Martin Johnson. Me, Dave Pendleton. Here we are, Dave. Here we are again. Windy day outside, so if you hear a bit of wind or a bit of feedback, it could be the wind. <laughs> Let's hope it's not, but um, we're ready for the spring now, aren't we, Dave? Pretty much, yeah. Ready for our spring. We're, we've we've recently announced, and I think we can say it on this Hubcast, because it is common knowledge now that mm-hmm. we're moving offices in the summer, so we're going to a fantastic new training facility in on March, or sorry, May, yeah. May the 1st. Um, which gives us all sorts of new opportunities. We're going to have our own new hubcast room, more training rooms. So we're just gearing up for that, aren't we, Dave? We are indeed. So um, today's hubcast, um, Dave and I have been speaking in the office recently. Uh, We've been reading some stuff. We've been compiling some research. We've been generally chatting about to our customers about something in particular, which... um, I don't think we do this uh, enough of this, Dave. I don't think we discuss it uh, enough, but I think it's something that constantly comes up in our sessions. And what I'd like to talk about on this hubcast, Dave, is hierarchies, Mm. and and specifically hierarchies in the context of organisations, because a hierarchy is happening in life in all different society. Every every species on the planet is formed into some form of hierarchy, Mm. and we can talk a little bit about that on this podcast, but we're sort of talking about organizational hierarchies here because as we transition into 2020 and beyond, and over the last 40 or 50 years, organizations have, have in general been built upon hierarchies. You have a CEO or an MD. Mm-hmm. You then have a series of a chain of command uh, of a management structure, and you have your foot soldiers and your workers on the shop floor. And that's typically how organizations have been structured. And as we move into 2020 and beyond with politics, I mean, we only have to look at politics now, the polarization of politics, Dave. Well, You've let's got, not look at politics. Uh, yeah, but, but it sort of plays into it. You yeah, know, the does. far right yeah. versus the far left. It's more far right and far left than ever before. This this absolute sort of you're either in the, in, in, in the group of capitalists or you're in the group of socialists mm. and there's nowhere in between. And, and then therefore the gulf between hierarchical structures and the view of them by the by the left, if you like, the liberal uh, type left versus the capitalist capitalist type right, mm. um, it, it's gotten even more um, aggressive. It's gotten even more distant, even more polarized. And, and even generally cultures and organizations have started to ask the question, should we have more of a flat structure? Should we not have management? Should we empower mm. people more? Should So I wanted to discuss it on this Hubcast, Dave, a bit no holds barred, mm-hmm. if you will. <laughs> no filter. <laughs> okay. Um because I think I have some I have I have some strong views on it. And I think um when when we do a lot of leadership work, you can only really develop as an organization from a leadership capability if you understand the makeup of your organization from a hierarchical perspective and why it's either necessary or not, if that makes sense. Yeah. 100%. So what's your what's your first thoughts mm. on it, Dave? Well, yeah, it's a super interesting topic because it is something that we come across almost in every discussion that we ever have with pretty much every customer we ever deal with. Because, I mean, even even right from first point of contact, you know, before we start to engage with a a new customer or a new client, we ourselves try to understand exactly where this person fits in the hierarchy so we can decide ourselves what sort of decision-making responsibility uh, they may have. And you you've know. already touched upon a really, really fascinating point there, which you, you use the words decision-making, which mm. I'll come back to. Yeah. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. Or when we have sales meetings with our customers, one of the first questions we ask when we get into the, the crux of understanding them is, so how many managers do you have mm. at different levels? Absolutely. And they'll go, right, well, we have yeah, six yeah, yeah. on the board, mm. we have 12 senior managers, then we have about 85 mid-managers, then we have sure. 120 frontline leaders. That's right. And they can even talk through the hierarchy. Yeah, yeah. In one answer. No, that's right, yeah. And then, you know, I guess even after we, we've engaged and, and contracts have been signed and schedules of work have been put together, that's all got to be done with somebody, a decision maker, who is uh, part of a hierarchy where they, I guess, have ultimate say and ultimate responsibility and accountability. You know, and then we deliver, when we start to deliver, we try, wherever possible, 
to deliver from the highest point of hierarchy we can mm. so that we can top down cast the cult- cultural shadow as we d- describe it because it's yeah. an important thing right Absolutely. so we talk about and we deal with consciously or unconsciously with hierarchy all the time yeah Absolutely. And I guess for the for the purpose of this podcast, Dave, I'm gonna let me open up with let me open up with the definition of ha- of a hierarchy. Yeah, what is a hierarchy? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm mm. not I'm not gonna teach anyone how to suck eggs, but mm-hmm. sometimes we can use these words interchangeably and you know forget situationally. That, yeah, and and, for, and forget that some people may need to just get a clarification on what we're talking around. So if I look at, and I, and I did look this up because I've got my own perception mm. of a hierarchy, but I did look this look this up, and the dictionary definition of a hierarchy in the context of organizational or cultural is this. It's a system in which members of an organization or society are ranked according to the relative status or authority. This in turn influences decision making at each level of the system. Mm. So that's the that's the definition of what we mean by a hierarchy. There is a system where it is people are ranked based on their status and authority mm-hmm. to make decisions and take action mm. within that system yep. um, of people, and that's that's what a hierarchy is. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is one of the things that I think is when when, it, when organizations talk to us when they feel like they have a culture which is us and you. It feels like the workers and the managers, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a massive, I think, misconception around the fact that the hierarchy exists to exert power on those below them. That's the general, I think, feeling from the bottom up. Those who are completely disenfranchised or disengaged because they think it's all about greed, it's all about power, it's all about driving the most out of us for your own personal gain. Mm-hmm. And you get paid a lot more than us, mm-hmm. and you reap the re- the rewards of the performance. So there's a general resentment that tends to come up from below when there's a culture where it's another new mentality, mm-hmm. and that is one of the things that I mean. As you know, I listen to a lot of Jordan Peterson. I think you've listened to a bit of Jordan Peterson mm-hmm. on this. He talks about this. I think there's an absolute uh, misconception about hierarchies exist only to exert power, and I don't think that's the case. I think I think you make a really good point. Um, I guess. The, the the caveat that I would add to that might be depending on the culture because there are some cultures who just see the hierarchy as uh, the boss, the manager, the one who shouts at us when we get things wrong, blah, blah, blah. But then, of course, there are few and far between, of course, there are those other cultures where the hierarchy is perfectly understood, why it's there, why it's needed in that organisation, and actually, the, the members that are part of that hierarchy exert the type of power and influence appropriate to the conditions and the culture of the organization. So there is no mis- misconception or misperception. And I think some of this depends on the types of individuals and their mindset and mentality that you've got within that hierarchy. I, I love that. So, And this is, this is my fundamental belief that we've just sort of linked into there is that I don't think the hierarchy is the problem, but the people it's within the people it within can it. be. 100%. The people within it can be. Because if you think about it, hierarchies have, have existed for thousands of years. It is ingrained in our DNA for us to form hi- hierarchies as a species. Well, I mean, societally, that's how we operate. That's how we operate. I mean, you look Absolutely. even if you go back millions of years, I mean, even if you're looking still today in, in, in chimpanzees or, or in any other species in, in, in the wild, hierarchies are form, formed <laughs> mm. at an early stage in communities based on power based on strength based on you know males Mm. fighting masculinity masculinity, power competition sure and at the end of it the reason to do that is because there is a reward at the end of it and when you strip us right back as an animal the reward for the alpha male rising to the top in a chimpanzee colony is that he gets to mate with all the females Mm. which means his offspring is is you know he's going to reproduce and he's he's done his job right interesting that's what the females want as well <laughs> the females only want a mate with the strongest most powerful most ferocious male so that's how their babies and there's be. and there's a million <laughs> other uh, examples like the yeah, lobster theory the etc yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a million other examples so it what what we're sort of saying is if you believe in evolution and science it's within our it, through hundreds of thousands of years if not millions of years mm. hierarchies are in our dna sure 
and 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 therefore I, I just want to come back to that point if organizations are now thinking around moving to different flatter structures or even the far end extreme of this which is holocracy holocracy yeah Oof. which we'll come to yeah, yeah. is um you cannot ignore millions of years of evolution mm. and how species operate in hierarchical structures and actually mm. they are the most productive still today hierarchies are, are more desirable than flat structures and they deliver far more productivity and performance and we'll mm. come on to why mm, sure so it's not they're not the devil but the people within them can can be yeah. it's not always around tyranny and power and exploitation but if you've got the wrong people in the hierarchies then absolutely then it, it can be yeah, yeah absolutely um, but let me just give you three reasons for hierarchies, Dave. That that's my view and, 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 and in my research. Then we can have a look at them because I'd like to bring bring our our print data into this and what we find mm. about humans. But three reasons for hierarchies is number one, responsibility. So the person who's um, or the people who are at the top of the chain in a hierarchy, without a shadow of a doubt, carry more responsibility than those below them. Now, what comes with responsibility is um, decision making, is stress, is pressure, etc. So, um, you know, responsibility is one of the three reasons for hierarchies. Number two, problem solving. People at the top of a hierarchy are asked by the shit, not not in isolation, but are responsible for, and usually. Um, are influential in solving problems. So I'll give you an example. A lot of people maybe like to shoot bullets at Apple, 80 billion global company probably rising. Mm. Uh, Steve Jobs and co. Uh, uh, and, and some of the board members now are probably, well, without a shadow of a doubt, are millionaires. They're reaping the benefits of average people buying iPods, iPads, iPhones, mm -hmm. etc. And some people resent that, but let, let's let's face it, you know, they, they solved a problem, a problem of personal productivity, and global connectivity that nobody else had solved prior through hundreds, thousands of hours of innovation, of, of time, of commitment, of effort, of you know, all of the, the history that goes behind it. The same with the same with airline industries who who you know solve the problem of taking us from one side of the world to the other side of the world, right? Mm. As well as having responsibility in a hierarchy people generally solve the problems or put the time and effort into innovate and create things that others can't. And the third one for me is capability and competence. Now, not many people like to talk about this, Dave, because when we're talking about intellectual ability or levels of competence, we like to think that every human being on the planet, given the right opportunity, can be as competent as each other, mm. given the right development. There may be a case for that, but there is a thing called genetics. There is mm. evolution. There, yeah. is, there is a thing that says uh, there's IQ, right? There's mm -hmm. EQ. There's all these things that can measure competence. And it's generally that the people who are at the top of the hierarchy is not in every occasion because we know some poor, poor leaders and people <laughs> who found them. Yeah. However, yeah. generally people, it's based on competence. So I always think if you look at people are, when they get to the top of a hierarchy are generally responsible for more than the workers and the people below them are responsible for, which comes with a lot of other stuff. They're generally try, asked to solve problems or create things other people can't. And they generally are carrying a level of competence or capability that is deemed worthy enough to be at the top of that hierarchy. And then the whole sort of, for me, the whole self-perpetuating cycle is if they get those three things right, then they will get a reward for shouldering that burden. So they get paid more. They get the six-figure salaries. They get the pensions. They get the bonuses. They get whatever it is. They grow the companies. They get more market share. So the reward for that, for shouldering the burden of what I've just discussed, then triggers the manifestation of capitalism. That's where capitalism comes from. Sure. They get richer and richer. They get bigger and bigger. Yeah. The companies grow. But then some people underneath will argue that, and then you'll say to them, but would you do that job if you was given the opportunity? And the answer in a lot of, occasion, in a lot of cases is probably no for mm. various reasons. Absolutely. So I, that, I just wanted to sort of put my view out there on why I think hierarchies are important and why they exist. But you're absolutely right. With the wrong people in them, it can quickly tip the balance. Mm. So um, looking at, at, at an individual level, Dave, I'm going to ask you a question because here's some more science and some more data from us. Um, I, I believe in the work that we do in terms of understanding human beings and individuals at a, at a deeper level, 
we we use the print tool. We use our our human iceberg theory. We do a lot of exit coaching one to one. We draw out people's sense of purpose. We're looking for core drivers, all of that stuff. So we know how people are wired generally. Yep. I believe some people want to lead and be at the top of a hierarchy, and I genuinely understand that some people want to be led. Mm. And actually, shepherds. and actually, their idea of a <laughs> worst nightmare would be at the top of the hierarchy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we we see that sort of thing all the time, don't we? You know, where we talk about development a lot. You know, we don't we try not to do single training interventions, single learning interventions. We like to be part of a development process. Now, I guess the perception sometimes here is that we're going to develop people into being future managers and leaders. Yeah, and it's a fair perception, but it's not always accurate because people on the group, as we know. Some of them are hardwired more towards leadership and some are more hardwired away from leadership. But again, what it comes down to is personal choice. As you say, some people really want to do the, the hierarchical leadership managerial stuff and other people just want to go to work to earn a living, to provide their family with what they need uh, and, and they come to work, do the job, go home again uh, and, and thanks ever so much. And yeah. That's my role in life. And you know, we both know people who have worked in the same organization or certainly the same industry, more or less at the same position for 20 years, 30 years, their salary has gone up incrementally throughout, you know, throughout inflation and, and throughout the years and so forth. Um, and they're more than happy with their place in life. Yeah. And as you accurately say, I've got no desire to climb that ladder, to earn the, the extra salaries, to get the bigger bonuses and to get the, the bigger responsibilities. Yeah, and when we, you know, there's if you took the general, um, the general terms from NLP of towards pleasure or away from pain, from pain you know, yeah. people are either mm. motivated towards achievement and pleasure or away from risk and pain. Yeah. And we see it with our uh, the, the, the print tool that sure. we use. You know, you've got some motivators that are more susceptible to a threat state and worry mm. about the consequence, and we see some motivators that are more driven by the challenge. And yeah, uh, you know, so you could we can we've got three and a half thousand data points on this now and we can actually see the people who are generally want to to fit into a structure and a system and contribute mm. more than they would like the burden yeah. of carrying the, the the mantle at the top of the hierarchy sure. because actually the way they're wired they would cripple under that sort mm. of pressure mm. or, or or their mental state would suffer and Where, that's even if they were capable by the way and that's even if the, if you were even added in that cap the competence capability. and capability yeah, you know so so there's the, there's the unconscious drivers and motivators of the individual that will lend itself to being somewhere in that hierarchy. And, and even in between, you've got some people who necessarily don't want to, you know, be at the bottom of an organization and just be an employer mm. or worker, mm. but they don't want to be the CEO. No. But they actually find their niche quite as a mid-management role, mm. team leader of a team or a head of department. That's that's about as far as they want, want to push themselves yeah. in terms of the hierarchy. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And so therefore, I do believe some people want to lead and, and others want to be led. And we know that yeah, firsthand. Absolutely. We know that firsthand. We've, we've heard We're it. told from, it firsthand. Yeah, by people who, who would, <laughs> yeah. it would be their worst nightmare. Absolutely. Right. So let me just read the definition of the opposite of a hierarchy. So we mentioned holacracy yeah. earlier on. Now, this is the polarized view of a hierarchy. Mm. I mean, there's a sliding scale in the middle from you know, a slightly reduced hierarchy to a more flatter management structure, but then there's holacracy. Yeah. And holacracy's definition is this. It's a method of decentralized management and organization organizational governance in which authority and decision-making throughout the organization and its teams is shared rather than being vested in a management hierarchy. So what it's saying is it's almost like if you're going to adopt true holacracy mm. in an organization, it's like we're not going to have any hierarchy mm. we're going to divide ourselves into functions and teams and we're going to share the burden of decision making innovation input you know whatever mm. it might be between the teams mm. and that's designed to almost um give everybody a voice dr drive contribution and decision making from every corner of your organization and reduce this boss stroke understudy you know, yeah. um, situation in the organization. Now, given what I just said about if there's three reasons for hierarchies, people who burden the responsibility, people who are good at problem solving or innovating, and people who have a higher cap capability or competence than others, and therefore 
the reward for that is that they will get paid a greater salary or they will reap the benefits which makes them work hard to go again and do yeah. the same again. Yeah. If you take that away in a holacracy, mm -hmm. this is the big conundrum. I've never seen an organization, Dave, I don't know about you, but we've never met an organization who have fully successfully implemented a holacracy as an <laughs> organizational structure. I think there's people trying to go somewhere mm -hmm. towards it, but I've never seen one to measure the levels of productivity who have fully implemented it. Well, um, somebody we worked with a year ago and two years ago, um, they they used to have uh, what they called a holacracy, uh, and they tried they tried it as a business model for maybe a couple of years, um, and it basically failed, simply because they had um, far too many people who were hardwired with almost just bobbing along on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, so things did get done but there was nobody really prioritizing the urgency of things getting done. There was nobody really driving outcomes. There was nobody really driving strategy and where we're going to go next. You know, it's not about this step. It's about three steps further forward. There was very few people, if anybody actually doing that. So as an organization, they just weren't progressing. There, there were levels of harmony. Yeah, of course. There, there were levels of, of motivation and so forth. But for those people who weren't self-motivating, they, they were almost dragging their heels around on a daily basis. So productivity-wise, it suffered. Outcome-wise, it suffered. As a business, they were starting to suffer. So they decided to go back to the old style hierarchy as it was before. They, they had a slight reshuffle. They did remove a, a, a layer of hierarchy so that there was a bit more sort of direct reporting, yep. a bit more visibility, a bit more uh, accountability and ownership. Um, and, and as far as I know, that, that, that's exactly where they are today and they are moving on and they are moving forwards and they, they are aiming towards strategies and so forth. Yeah, I mean, I remember at the time the word the holacracy as a concept came out, a few books were written, it started to pick up some speed on social, etc. and it seems to have died a death. Mm. And the reason is because of the, the, the things we're talking about here because the minute you take the incentive and the reward away from the people who carry the burden, the responsibility... Um, to drive problem-solving, innovation, capability, and competence, the minute you take that away from them, you're going to lose that element of their contribution. Mm -hmm. And the minute you lose that, everybody's looking at each other to, yeah. as, to, as, to, as to fill those gaps. And when it doesn't happen, that's when performance and productivity suffers. Um, and it's just the world we live in. And whether you think that's right or wrong, whether you think there should be highly competent people who carry big burdens, who are really capable at running organizations and problem solving, but they get paid far more than the workers and that's wrong or not. It's just you're trying to undo millions of years of evolution, millions of years of our DNA where we, we, we ordered ourselves in these structures, societally and organizationally, to be able to produce to be able to be productive, to be able to evolve into who we are today. Sure. And I think that's part of the problem when as much as the notion and the concept of holacracy is a lovely one, and it's a great one, and, and, and living in a world where everybody is completely free to contribute, make decisions and drive input, and where that shared accountability could truly work. It's a wonderful notion, but it comes back to my comment I always say in my talks, Dave. The problem with a shared responsibility mm. is that it's nobody's problem. Mm, absolutely. And when it's nobody's problem, that's where productivity suffers. Yeah, for sure. Without yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, no, absolutely. The final thing I'm going to mention is is it's another thing I think driven by by Jordan Peterson. I think he puts it in a slightly more controversial way, but it's the notion of equality of opportunity versus equality of outcome. And that's really where hierarchies and capitalism has always, even to this day, prevailed over socialism or communism, for example, um, because there's a difference between the equal equality of opportunity versus the equality of outcome, i.e. the equality outcome says that we should have 50 percent men, 50 percent women at the higher in, in, operating in the hierarchies of organizations. But then you're not even accounting for race and for many different other factors that would also constitute, mm. constitute equality of outcome. Whereas equality of opportunity is saying, no, 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 if we have opportunities open for everyone, everywhere, within a hierarchical structure, but they are, they are chosen and selected based on responsibility, problem solving, and capability stroke competence, then you've got to allow 
the people selected into those roles to to automatically sort of filter in mm. rather than it be it has to be a quality of outcome which mm. would say we need an equal amount of everybody and everything sure. in the hierarchy hierarchical structure and you know we've got we've got huge uh, we've made huge strides in the western world well in the world over recent years in true in inequality in terms of the number of women coming up into senior roles versus men and rightly so right and including race into that over the last hundred years as well um but hierarchies, for me, need to be in place to serve a purpose for maximum productivity of organizations. Responsibility and accountability is incredibly important, as is problem solving, as is capability and competence. And if we always try to drive the right equality of opportunity, rather than become absolutely um, immersed in the equality of outcome, then that's the right way to go about it. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I also think that hierarchy is necessary. I do. Um, I just think that, you know, the work that we do on a regular basis, we we see so many examples of where an organization or a business has put people in positions of higher responsibility and accountability who are not necessarily the right people. Yeah. Uh, not even the right humans, never mind uh, capability and competence, you know, you know, we see people who work in customer centric industries who actually just aren't very nice to other people, you know, and and, and how can that be productive and how can that be a, a successful person? And because that's where hierarchies get that's where hierarchies get shot at when yeah, absolutely because, because because you've got sure. the wrong person who is taking advantage of that hierarchical position. Yeah. By being a bit of a tyrant, mm. by being a dictator, mm. by reprimanding, by oppressing. Yeah. Some leaders oppress. Yeah, they do. And that's the problem They're with a hierarchy. Game. It's a problem with mm. a hierarchy. But what 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 then happens is people throw capitalism in general mm -hmm. into that conversation as a, a the whole thing's oppression. It's yeah. not, right? But the wrong people in it absolutely will oppress. Yeah, and that's absolutely. what we've got to deal with as an organization. Mm. If we've got the wrong people in, We've got to switch them out. We've got to make sure we've got the right people in those hierarchies. Yeah, absolutely. To be able to mm -hmm. be able to deliver on the outcome without yeah, a shadow absolutely. of a doubt. I always somebody asked me, and this is my final point on it, Dave, before we finish up. Someone asked me in a session not so long back about this, and they were saying, um, but Martin, as we move forward with Generation Z and millennials coming into the organization, shouldn't we be Shouldn't we, as as baby boomers and you know and Gen X, shouldn't we be ask, asking those opinions, those wonderful creative opinions, you know, on all things in our organisations from those generations? And I'm like, well, absolutely, we should be asking mm. their opinions and including sure. them. But let me give you another analogy of, of of the situation. Look at your. I said, how many kids have you got? And he said, three. I said, you know, how many? Uh, what have you got? And he said, uh, two boys and a girl, something like that. What age are they? And he was like, six nine and I can't remember the ages six nine and 14 so I said right so you've got you and your wife six nine and a 14 year old in your organ in your home life you have a hierarchy he went he looked at me and he said I said no you do well, hear me out do. I said you have a hierarchy you're at the top of it probably you and mm -hmm. your wife mm -hmm. uh, you know you both bring different things to that hierarchy yeah. but you wouldn't turn around um you might ask your kids what they want to do on the weekend where should we go on the weekend kids but you wouldn't ask your kids for advice on the the current mortgage rates <laughs> and whether you should switch switch to a fixed <laughs> yeah. or a variable would you yeah. and he went well no and i said and that's what we're talking about that's hierarchies in action because you have more tenure more experience more competence and carry more responsibility for the mortgage than your kids do yeah. it's the same in organizations we want to embrace we want to empower we want to draw out but we can't get past the fact that we are paid and carry the burden to to make decisions, to take action, and to drive outcomes that other people in the organization are not just yet. Yeah. And that's why they exist, and that's where productivity comes from. Sure. So with a minute and a half left, I think our standpoint, Dave, if I've read you correctly, is hierarchies have existed for millions of years in all species, in all walks of life. Organizational hierarchies are still today more desirable in our, in our research and findings, more desirable and impactful on productivity and performance than flat structures, mm -hmm. certainly than extreme flat, flat structures like holacracy. Um, hierarchies aren't the problem, but the people, people in it them are. can be. Yeah, absolutely. And there are three distinct reasons why hierarchies, you know, within capitalism will always drive the productivity, and that is the responsibility, the problem-solving stroke innovation element and based on capability and confidence. 
Um, so get the right leaders, people. Get the right leaders mm -hmm. in the right job yeah. or get the right people and skill them. And that's yeah. what we're here to do, Dave, right? We try to do, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Interesting topic. Mm. I think we'll come back and do a bit more on a holacracy in another hubcast. But for now, Dave, I think that'll do. Think about it. Um, if you've been caught up and dragged up into trying to drive a more flat structure, just ask yourself the question, <laughs> why? Why and what is it trying to, you know, what, what purpose is it yeah. trying to serve? Awesome. Dave Pendleton, that'll do us for this hubcast. Pleasure. Thank you very much. And we'll be back shortly with another T2 hubcast. Thank <music> you.